here's my take on the CXE CSEC chemistry paper two exam. But first, what was your experience like during the exam? You can share your comment below, contact me on Instagram at extratime42, or you can send me an email or send me a message on Facebook. Well, first, I would like to say, we as educators were guided by the revised release of topics for your 2021 examinations for this year. And in this document, it had given a list of the topics that were expected to come on your paper too. For chemistry, we were expecting atomic structure, periodic table and periodicity, the mole concept, acid bases and salts, electrochemistry, sources of hydrocarbons, organic chemistry, reactions of organic compounds, non-metals, and qualitative analysis. And I must say, as we go through the paper, for the most part, these were the topics that did come. So let's see what were the topics that did come on the exam. So at first, I saw that the first question was electrolysis, and it was a fairly decent question asking about the electrolysis of copper sulfate. I hope you identified your anode and your cathode appropriately. And luckily, we did cover this topic, this exact question in our marathon. So I hope you got a chance to view that. So you were asked to plot a graph of the volume of oxygen formed with time. And you would expect oxygen to be formed as the hydroxide ions would be discharged at the anode. You were then asked to define electrolysis and give examples of what you could use as electrodes. As long as you did not use copper in the electrolysis of copper sulfate, then you would have been using an inert electrode once it was a metal or a graphite. And then you were to have given a good plot of the points. I did a rough plot here and make sure your, gra your graph had its height. And from the graph, you were to see how much time it took you to form approximately 5.5 cm cubes same cubes of oxygen. I would say from this, just a rough estimate, probably about 37 minutes. I hope you got something close when you actually plotted your graph. And then it went on to ask you what were the ions present in solution? What were the, and what represented the anode and the cathode? What ions would go towards the anode? And what was the reaction at the cathode? Now, I really hope you slayed this question and that you had gotten a chance to watch your electrolysis module in our marathon. Then you were asked to do your calculations for electrolysis by first calculating the charge. And then you went on to calculate the number of moles of copper you would expect to form in this process and the mass of copper, which came out to be about 4.16 grams. Now it's stated that you were expecting to form 4.85 grams of copper and you didn't. So it meant that the, sol the copper sulfate maybe had impurities in it. You'd expect the blue color to fade with time as you did this electrolysis process. And you were asked what you would have done if you wanted to purify copper. Of course, you had to make your anode impure copper and your cathode pure copper. This question was worth a whopping 25 marks. Then next, you had your acids and your bases. You, you were asked to give your definitions of the acid and the salt. We did cover this when we looked at our acids and bases and our salts in our marathon. Really hoped you got a chance to see that. And then John tested sodium bicarbonate, which turned red litmus blue state. That suggests that it was basic and that it would have a pH of greater than seven. Next, you had your identification of ions. This comes under qualitative analysis, where iron and sodium hydrogen carbonate were both reacted with sulfuric acid. So iron would have given us iron 2 plus ions. That would be the ions that give us a pale green color, and we would expect hydrogen gas to be formed when a metal reacts with an acid. And we did get the hydrogen when it gave off that squeaky pop sound. I hope you got this gas correct. When we had looked at the um, identification of gases, I hope you got a chance to watch that. Then you were asked to give the properties of metals. To be honest, you could have given any two of the multiple properties it had and then show the reaction between iron and sulfuric acid, giving you the salt and hydrogen gas. You were also asked about the identification of gases. This also falls underneath your qualitative analysis. Be asked to identify carbon dioxide, which you could have bubbled through some lime water, which is your calcium hydroxide, and it would have turned from colorless to cloudy. And the balanced equation for sodium hydrogen carbonate with sulfuric acid 
would be as shown here below. So really hope you were able to score as much of the 15 marks as you could for this section. And then you went on to organic chemistry. You were given two compounds, compound A, which was an alkane, and compound B, which was an alkene. The alkanes, you know, have the general formula, CNH2N plus two. And what were the characteristics of the homologous series? You could have given any three of the remaining four characteristics. They said you could not have given back the same thing the fact that they had the same general formula. Compound B was an alkene, and then you were asked to draw them, compound A being the alkane, which is three carbons and it's eight hydrogens, and the alkene must have a double bond, so it had four carbons and eight hydrogens. And then you were asked to distinguish between the alkene and the alkene using permanganate. Only the alkene would have reacted in test tube number two, changing it from purple to colorless. Of course, the alkene was unsaturated, which represented compound B as it was. It did not have the maximum hydrogens and it had the carbon-carbon double bond. And I hope you were able to give at least one use of it, an alkene, which would be represented by compound A, and an alkene represented by compound B. Next, you had a question on the periodic table. And this was asking you why silicon was placed in period three. And I hope you were able to justify that by the fact that it had three shells. And you did get a question on structure and bonding where you were asked to show the dot and cross diagram for an, a molecule of fluorine. Next, you were asked about isotopes, about the definition, and you were asked to identify two isotopes here, which would have definitely been carbon um, 12 and carbon 14, which had six protons each. You know that carbon does not have seven protons, so it couldn't have been any of these two in the middle. And then you were asked to give the uses of radioisotopes. So you could have given the uses of any two radioisotopes that you were familiar with. You did have a question on group two as well. This comes under the periodic table. And I hope you were able to watch that module that we did on the periodic table in our marathons. And I hope you were able to show the reaction between calcium and water forming calcium hydroxide and hydrogen. And then you are asked to show the reactivity of the elements in group two. And of course, X being at the bottom would have been the most reactive element in group two, followed by calcium, then magnesium, according to what was shown here. You had more questions on organic chemistry, the sources of hydro, um, hydrocarbons being natural gas and crude oil. And you were asked to identify the fractions from the fractional distillation of crude oil based on the number of carbons they contain. I hope you were able to give any two that were correct. You also had a question on cracking. So we did speak about cracking in our marathons. When you have a long chain hydrocarbon being converted into an alkene and an alkane, and for cracking, you do need a catalyst and heat. And then you had the alkane butane here, and you were asked what it was used for. It could be used as a fuel for cooking or for camping. And you were asked to show what you would have formed if you reacted butane with bromine in UV light. You would have replaced one hydrogen with bromine as you were asked to show the monobromo compound. This would have been the structure and the reaction was a substitution reaction. And then the balanced equation for the combustion of propane would mean that you would form three molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water. And then guys, for number six, I must say, this was a surprise to us, your educators, as it was to you, the students, because based on the broad topics that were given, it was specifically stated that you would have been tested on non-metals for paper two, yet you got a question on metals. And I must say that as educators, we will make inquiries to the relevant authorities um, about this type of question. However, I am hoping that during the school year, you would have been exposed to metals and metal extraction. And being that you have to know all the topics for paper one that's coming up, I hope you were still able to bat this question away. So how you would have extracted aluminum is different from iron. I am um, the aluminum is more reactive, so you would have used electrolysis. Iron is lower down and so can be extracted by heating with carbon. Lead is below iron and is extracted in a similar way to how you would extract iron by heating it with carbon. And this would show you the two equations for how you would extract the lead. And then finally, you are asked to show 
the usefulness of metals and metals that could harm you. So iron is definitely a useful metal um, that could be formed, used to form hemoglobin and lead is a toxic metal that can be poisonous to the nervous system leading to mental retardation and learning disabilities. So that was your 2021 chemistry paper two exam. Again, guys, please share with me what your experience was like. Your opinion is very important in helping educators like me to improve how we can best help you and others in preparing for your next exam paper. Thank you so much for your support by liking, subscribing, and sharing these educational videos that are beneficial to all our Caribbean students. I have to give special thanks to one of my YouTube followers who shared the chemistry paper with me today, which allowed me to make this video. And I cannot forget that these videos are made possible because of those who support my annual marathons and my yearly small group tutoring classes. It's time to get ready for paper one. And remember that all the topics will be tested on paper one. We will be having our paper one marathons next week. Please feel free to join as we get you prepared to score all 20% that is left up for grabs for you to score that grade one in your exams.